Hello everybody, this is War Story Video Blog. I am Alex and we are here at Thomas Whitman house and uh, now near the bar we would like to uh, tell you uh, some stories about touched weapon that has been modified by veterans. I'm collecting pictures of Russian veterans who brought back to Russia some um, nice. interesting items, like for example, daggers and uh, things like that. And now you can see on the screens uh, all these pictures I have and I'm buying. If you have some pictures like that, uh, please uh, call me and <laughs> send them <laughs> to you. Yeah. Yeah. And most of these items uh, that veterans. Uh, where after war has been modified, denazificated and something like that. Yeah. Uh, could you show some items from your collection and from your inventory that uh, has the same way? Yes, uh, I'd be happy to, Alex. You know, in, in this hobby, um, at the end of the war, uh, most soldiers, Russian, American, British, whatever, uh, they all wanted to bring something home as a trophy. and. Uh, Sometimes, people being the way they are, everybody's different, uh, they alter things or they buy things uh, at the end of the war that never really existed, uh, but they didn't know that they didn't exist. They just bought them from probably someone on the street or whatever. But I'll just show you uh, some of the things. Um, I don't have a lot, but just a couple things to give you the idea of, of what you see sometimes. Mm -hmm. Um, this is uh, uh, an interesting item in that you can see it used to be a sword. It was brought back as a sword and there would have been a, a pea guard here that came around and a quill and end that was here and of course a long sword blade. So what the veteran did, he probably thought, well, I don't want a sword but I think I could use a knife for my hunting. Yeah. So he cut he cut this off, cut this off here, and cut the blade off and, and re-tipped it. So he did kind of a good job, um, but really he ruined uh, an artifact. But, um, well, he brought it home. It still represented his war trophy, so that's all that, that counts, I guess. And the uh, interesting thing that he didn't uh, cut the eagle. He did he, not take the eagle off. A lot of yeah. times you'll see that the veterans will rub the swastika mm -hmm. off of the uh, off of the eagle. Yeah, so. that that is uh, why he would not like forget uh, what forget enemy was. Yeah, that's <laughs> yeah. right. Remember the enemy. Yeah. yeah. So that's one kind of a crazy thing. Um, I'll show you another thing. As you can see, uh, it's parts from mm -hmm. a Luftwaffe sword. In fact, the parts are beautiful, uh, never issued. Yeah, and, and, it, and it appears that maybe the veteran uh, either got into a factory and put these pieces together himself. As you can see, the cross guard is upside down because he didn't know the difference. Uh, or it's possible that maybe one of the men that worked in the factory just took all these pieces and put them together to sell to an American GI. I don't know. But you can see they're, uh, they're, this is in beautiful condition. All of the gilding is still in both of the, the swastikas on the uh, pommel and the, uh, and the cross guard. And the crescent hanger is still on the top of the look off a scabbard. Uh, and the bottom fitting is the correct fitting, uh, but they were not screwed on. They look like they've been glued on or pressed on somehow, forced on. Um, and then what's interesting too, uh, the blade in it is a bayonet blade. It's not a yeah. sword blade. Extra Zeitung Giver one. You know? Yeah. It's a regular standard bayonet blade. I don't know whether it has a maker mark on it or a no, no, no. maker mark on it. But it still hasn't been sharpened. No, hasn't been sharpened. 
So these are some of the crazy things that you that you see, and uh, that is um, modification. It's a modification, yeah. <laughs> yeah. And uh, uh, have you ever uh, opened it? No, it? no, I never opened it. No. That's interesting. How to it? <laughs> yeah, how it was put together. Yeah, mm -hmm. no, I never opened it. Uh, uh, when I first bought it, I thought, well, I can use this for parts. If I have a Luftwaffe sword with no pommel or something, I could take it. And then after I had it a while, I thought, why do I want to do that? It's such a neat thing the way it is. And, uh, you know, just so I can make a few dollars, ah, you know, it, uh, mm -hmm. it's more fun to, uh, to keep it the way it is. So that's some of the, cr the crazy you, things that you see. If you open it one day, please take a picture. I would like to see how, how it is, but because uh, the spike, well, the spike we, of the uh, blade, it's too short. If it comes apart, I'll open it. I've never opened it, so I don't oh. know. But let's just see what what oh, oh, the uh, cool. what they did with the tang for mm -hmm. the... Uh, because oh. there seems to be a thread that goes all the way through here. Yeah. The th oh. Let's see this. Oh, no ferrule either. Remember, uh -huh. these had a ferrule on them. No, it doesn't. It doesn't come apart. It's 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 maybe jammed in there mm -hmm. somehow. So it's interesting. It, yeah, it should it should be shorter here. Yeah, yeah. Um, hmm. We need an X-ray. <laughs> well, they whoever made it made it so that it wouldn't come apart. Mm -hmm. It's really curious things. But this is all completely standard inside, and yeah, maybe yeah. he connects the tongue of uh, Luftwaffe uh, sword and uh, yeah, this and well welded welded the bayonet uh, tang to the sword tang. Yeah, that would be the only way you would get the length that you'd need for this. But uh, anyhow, we have to go to, <laughs> to go to hospital to X-ray room and ask. Yeah, to yeah, <laughs> make I it. could take it to my dentist. Yes, yes. Yeah. I say, look, instead of x-raying my teeth, can you x-ray this Luftwaffe handle? Mm -hmm. <laughs> he would probably say, get out of here! <laughs> Maybe, but if he's interested in uh, these things. <laughs> yeah. So then, and I'll show you one more thing. Maybe some of uh, other subscribers uh, are dentists and uh, could uh, help us with it. Help us get an x-ray, yeah. Mm -hmm. Good idea, Alex, yeah. good idea. This last thing that I'm going to show you um, is really a shame. Uh, this is a uh, diplomatic dagger produced by Alcozo, uh, and it's really in uh, mint condition. All of the silverine is here, beautiful grip plates, uh, no lifting anywhere. Uh, a beautiful um, Alcozo blade on it in mint condition with the Alcozo factory mark. And what's happened here, the veteran, when he brought this home, uh, he decided that he did not want the swastika. As you collectors know, this eagle grasps a wreath swastika. And he was able to cut the swastika off, and he finished it quite well. Yeah, it's nicely uh, done. Yeah, it's very nicely done. Um, and he must have taken the the uh, hilt off to get to this. Mm -hmm. uh, and what he did, he put the hilt on backwards. The hilt is supposed to go the other way. You know, it's yeah. supposed to face that way. So, he, so yeah, that's the front side. This is the front side. So he um, he didn't realize that and put it together backwards. He didn't uh, care about it. He that didn't. Time. He didn't care about it. It was just and, a trophy. Uh, and the shame of it is that um, if this cross guard had had the um, the swastika on it, uh, this dagger would be worth in the area of twelve to fourteen thousand mm -hmm. dollars. And without it, it just becomes a um, a curiosity. Who wants a diplomatic dagger that doesn't have a swastika? <laughs> so, uh, but this is a way of this uh, thing because um, everything yeah. have yeah. their no own way, way and uh, right. uh, just, maybe maybe if uh, this one will be with a swastika, you will not own it. <laughs> no, I would have sold it, and that would have been <laughs> the end of it. So this way, the uh, I'll keep this. Maybe I'll find a cross guard someday and I'll be tempted 
mm -hmm. uh, to put it on, but. Uh, but if not, it's okay too. Um, For me, the, uh, things like this, uh, it's interesting too, because um, I know one more diplomatic dagger with, uh, with broken swastika, it not so nicely done, it's a little uh, bit uh, more, uh, yes, a little bit more crappy condition, but uh, interesting uh, thing on the scabbard, there is a description. Uh, in remembrance of uh, World War Two and, ah. and Russian and Russian family name, so ah. uh, somebody it, it was like uh, extra sight and give your bayonet given. <laughs> yeah. So yeah. Well, that's interesting um, thing. Uh, what you say is true. This all reflects back on the mm -hmm. people that brought it home yeah. and what they wanted to remember their war experience. Um, People say, oh, why did he cut the swastika off? But you have to remember that the, when you were an army fighting against the Nazis, the army in, in America was trained to hate the Germans. That's the way you get young men to really fight. So they really hated them. And then, of course, when they found out all the atrocities that uh, they committed, um, they were a bad, bad people. Mm -hmm. um, there's no question about it and um, maybe the man after he found out about some of the crimes that were committed by the Germans and he got home with his dagger he thought ah let's get rid of the swastika maybe I will feel better then mm -hmm. so that's probably what uh, probably what happened um, we have to be careful as collectors we love the relics Yes. Uh, we, they're, they're beautiful. They're a work of art. But we don't like what the Germans did. Yeah. We don't absolutely like that. Correct. Um, I myself, I try to just collect things that have to do with the, the soldiers and the war itself, nothing to do with the other things. Um, you can't forget about it, but you have to respect that too. So at least that's the way I feel. Yeah. Yeah. For me, the same. Yeah, uh, me and too. most collectors do. Uh, I know thousands of collectors, and they're interested in the beauty of the items. That's yeah. really what it is. And and sometimes um, guys starting collect uh, start to collect um, when they remember uh, that in their family was the same dagger, like army dagger or something like that, like in your family um, yeah. was. And, uh, and in this case, they start to collect from that items uh, they family own. Uh, and then... Uh, this was the beginning. Yes, this, yes. It interested them at that time. And most people didn't realize that you could buy these things or that there were other pieces that you could collect. Yeah. And um, if they're anything like me, when you, I had two daggers that were brought back by my uncle from World War II, and I never knew that there were more daggers until I saw some in a shop one time. And when I found that out, that was the end of me. I became a uh, collector my whole life. Since 1965, I've been collecting. That's a long time. And you never get tired of it. Uh, you always see something uh, different that you've see, never seen before. It's always so interesting. The people in the hobby are a lot of fun. And it's not a bad way to spend your, your life if you can get your wife to appreciate it, which is very <laughs> difficult. <laughs> yeah, that's true. <laughs> very difficult. That's true. They, uh, they don't understand why... You bought a chained SS dagger and didn't take the kids to Disneyland. <laughs> mm, yes, <yeah>, sometimes. <laughs> and, and you got to be very careful with things like that. Um, I always say, if you if you buy something uh, for yourself, maybe you should buy something for your wife too at the same time. Absolutely correct. Uh, and that way, you have a little bit of. Uh, possible that she won't hate you so much but it's, mm -hmm. it's still very difficult sometimes you can just buy uh, a couple of dozen nice roses and that's a good thing too um, they don't cost what the chained ss did but at least you're thinking of your wife and considering her yeah uh, and don't 
buy a chained SS that's when you should take your kids to Disneyland. Don't do that. It's not good. It's not good. Uh, yes. But sometimes it depends. <laughs> yes, it depends, depends on how good the chained SS was. <laughs> <laughs> yes. Yes. Okay. Uh, that's the problem. I know I know how you collectors all are on the same way. It's uh, uh, you lay up at night thinking of excuses why you did this and uh, how you're going to explain to your wife when she finds out. Mm -hmm. Oh, I know what you do. You hide them in drawers and hide them in cabinets and think that they won't find it. And then when they do, oh, oh, that, oh I, I, I found that at a garage sale for $25, you know, yeah. and uh, it's a shame that we have to make little lies like that. But uh, I... I I'm sure it's come up in every collector's family. And it was a comment, it's like a scary dream of uh, of the collector. Uh, it's woke up and uh, see that wife sold all your collection with the price you told. Your... Yeah, all for the price that you said you paid at the flea market. Yes. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> well, yeah. that, that, that's, um, that can happen. Uh, I know I... With my first wife, I um, I went to a show in California, um, the Great Western Show. It was one of the most wonderful shows that were uh, ever had in the past. And um, my wife did not want me to go. Uh, and when I got home, my whole collection was gone. Uh, she took it off of the wall, and uh, she told me that she sold it all. Uh, actually, she put it in trash bags and hid it down in the crawl space in our cellar. Oh, wow. uh, but uh, she didn't tell me that for two weeks. So I don't want you guys to go through these kind of things. <laughs> uh, it's not it's not a good situation. Um, yeah, but it is a good lesson. It's a good lesson. Yeah, it is a good lesson. Well, maybe not good enough lesson because I'm on my second wife now. <laughs> <laughs> okay. So it's, it was very interesting uh, story and it was very interesting interview and we touch few important things for all collectors, I think, for mm -hmm. important themes. And uh, thank you very much for to call me and uh, thank you very much for our video and um, i hope you collectors uh, like this video too like me and um, please text in uh, comments do you like it or not and if you have some questions uh, just let me know thank you thomas you're very welcome alex thank you and good nothing is more fun than to talk about the hobby yeah it's my that's, pleasure that's true yeah